Hi, I'm Nancy Franz Baz. Welcome to my studio on this rainy Friday. In my series, Unframed, which will be posted every other Friday, I will be covering the story behind the face and figure, what my brushes are, how I mix the flesh tone, the paint, and there will be guest artists that also will appear. So stay tuned for that. In the last episode, part one, I covered the story behind the face and figure in Life Path, which deals with sometimes in life when we have to make a decision, we don't know whether to turn left or right. Go, stop. So the color in here, a lot of it, they're complementary colors of red and green to symbolize that, like as an allegory, I'm using color as a psychological effect to tell a story. And then what I did was keep it very tonal, not make it so bright in color. Uh, I wanted something very value-based where the color was rich and still keep your focus on the face. So that was the most important thing is the expression of her face and then how do the birds relate to that. So how I started this painting, I always work from back to front. I never start on my white canvas with the flesh tone first. I have done that. It's a little challenging because unless you have the values in the background and the hue and the temperature, it's really hard to gauge the flesh tone, especially if it's a darker skin color. Um, that could be a little tricky. You want to offset the dark and the light. So in this one, she's Northern European. I kept that in mind. So she has very fair, cool skin. Now, in the past, um, I come from a makeup background. Uh, my mom had a store. And so when I was a kid for extra money, she would have me come in on the weekend and mix foundations, custom blended foundations for women that would come in. And that comes in really handy because you're constantly thinking how light they are, how dark they are, are they warm, are they cool? You have to match it on the money and they cannot look gray. Mort, we call it in Italian, dead. You don't want your paintings to look dead uh, in the flesh. So you want them to be alive, but you don't want them to be so hot that they're like a lobster, you know? We don't want lobsters either. So um, I use that ability that I learned from makeup by looking at the general average of the person when I do photograph them, if they don't do a life sitting with me, I look at their chest right away. And I can tell by their chest, average out with the face, what the average of their skin color is going to be. And then based on that, I could then determine what my shadow value and color and temperature will be. Now, generally speaking, indra light is warm shadow, cool light, like the Dutch. The Dutch would always do that with an open window. That's like a north light sort of situation. Uh, on cloudy day, if you go out and shoot, it's that same sort of light. It's very silvery. It's very natural. The transitions are uh, very close value. Think Bouguereau. He did a lot of that. And, and I love Bouguereau's flesh tones and studied them a lot. Um, I copied a lot. So I kind of kept that in my head. I do like the Boston School Tarbell. Paxson had beautiful flesh tones. So I'm very into that. And coming from that background, I utilize that knowledge into my painting when I mix, just as if I was doing their foundation color. So in this, the model being Irish, Northern European, she's very fair, she has a cool skin. So what I had to do is mix a, a cool flesh tone and she's light and she's surrounded by a dark middle and dark value background. So going over my palette very quickly, Lead white, and most of my colors, by the way, are Michael Harding with a few Rembrandts, and here and there are some Rublev colors as well. Lead white, number one, because it dries quick and I work on panel, and that's really important. Cad lemon, French yellow ochre, warmer than yellow ochre, that's more like yellow green. Transparent oxide yellow, yellow lake deep, very transparent, great for transitions or just to warm something up without making it powerful like a cadmium would be because it's so opaque. Cad red light, brilliant pink, cad red deep, alizarin claret, transparent oxide red, cinnabar green medium. I'll be right back. I forgot to put it on my palette.
here we are. Cinnabar Green Medium. I don't have a camera now, so you'll have to bear with me. All right, Cinnabar Green Medium, great in the flesh tone. I use it all the time. I sometimes have permanent green light, and there's another one called Yellow Green by Sennelier. I'll use that too if I need to stay light and warm. Viridian, this is Rembrandt, Transparent Oxide Red Rembrandt. Viridian is Michael Harding. Cerulean Blue, Michael Harding, is transparent. I like it, some people don't like it, it's too transparent. I like it in the flesh, it's great. King's Blue, Light. Rembrandt, Cobalt Blue, Rembrandt, Ultramarine Blue Deep. Manganese Violet, it's like permanent mauve. I like it in the flesh where you need some cool violet tones. Sennelier, Cool Gray is the color and you can warm it up and I like it for the eye, the sphere of the eye, sclera it's called. It uh, makes a nice eye color. Um, I use it in the highlights. Um, I use it for certain things I need to gray down when I don't want to mix a gray, but you can manipulate the color really well. So I do like it a lot. Okay, so how did I start her flesh tone? I first mapped in the background, and in the background, I used a color by Michael Harding that I don't have out, but it's called Green Gold. And I used it with my Viridian. Um, Rublev has a color, uh, it's called Terra Vert. And that, it's like an earth green. It's a really beautiful color. Um, I really like it for certain uh, paintings. And it dries very quick. All the Rublev colors dry quicker because there's no fillers in them. So I use that for the background. And for the trees, I, I don't use black on my palette except sometimes when I want to push things back. I want that pop in an accent, I will use that. But for the tree color and values, I used ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and transparent oxide red. Um, they make a great black, and I can manipulate if I want it to look more purple, more green, more in the transparent oxide red family. Um, when you up it with white, it makes a really great uh, gray. So an example of that, I'll show you an example of that. So here's a white, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, I'll take a little transparent oxide red. So that's in the violet family, but if I want to make it just black, I won't add white at all. And I'm going ultramarine blue. I always usually wipe off with a shop towel from Home Depot the color so I don't dirty up all my color. And look at this black you get. It's really great. Um, and I know I mix a lot of blue, so it's almost like a, a Prussian blue. And then when you up it with white, it could be like a Haynes gray almost. There you go. So I use that a lot, especially like if it's navy or black clothing, I'll opt to use that. And you can always see the under colors. Um, through the parts that are very dark that appear black with like some of the transparent oxide red. Um, it just has a really great look and it, and it doesn't sink. It's a slow dryer though. So in my first pass, I'll use liquid so that it dries right away because I paint on Dibon or linen panel and I want it to be dry the next day. And I know a lot of people are against that, but you know, I need to be having it dry the next day. I need it to be dry. So um, I do use that. And then in my second pass, I'll use uh, PM5 by Michael Harding. Uh, I've tried recently Prohibition Medium by Edge Pro Gear. It's uh, triple rectified turpentine, so it'll dry right away. Make sure you have a lot of ventilation in your studio, which I do. And I wear gloves, the Edge Pro Gear gloves in black. Um, those are really great uh, because th they don't reflect and they last a long time. Um, so those are some of the things I use. Um, another thing like I'll oil out with if, if I'm not using any medium is uh, Natural Pigments Oleo Gel. Um, I don't like to use it a lot 
because I do like using medium. I hate to say that, but I do. So certain effects that I have, I, I do that. Um, and then sometimes I just use uh, stand oil with uh, rectified turpentine. Um, and that's why I wear gloves and I keep ventilation in my studio. And there's a lot of uh, air, air units that kind of pull the, I forget what you call them, but they blow the air back out, um, which my husband, he knows all about that stuff. Anyway, so when I first mix her flesh tone, um, I try to not go by the core of the shadow value, meaning the bed bug line, the terminator. I usually do like uh, what the reflected light value would be, and then I get darker as I need be. So I got the background in, the hair value in, and then I mixed Cad Red Deep with Cinnabar Green Medium, which gave me this color here. If I don't want it to be as light, I put a little alizarin, which is the cooler of the reds, on my string and then the cooler of the greens would be viridian and so that's mixed in there so that's a good accent if you need it to go cooler just add more viridian to that and if you use black you could do that as well I tend to like to use complementary colors and analogous color to do my color okay so half tone that turns the form so you have it in the shadow into the light Right along the shadow shape, which I usually keep my shadows flat, is that dark half tone. That's the transition of turning into the light. Sometimes the light creeps into the shadow too. So it could go both ways. Sometimes you'll see, you'll transition your half tones into the shadow, depending on how the drop off of the light is. Or sometimes you will bring the dark into the light. It all depends on where the light is positioned and the fall off. So this is my halftone color in this painting. There's a lot of green. So basically your environment is going to determine your shadow color, um, the temperature of the light. So if it's a um, cool light, it's a warm shadow. If it's warm light, it's a cool shadow. Think outdoor light would be warm light unless it's cloudy, then it's a cool light, more like north light. And then indoor light, if you have daylight bulbs um, and you want that cool light, north light effect if you don't have a north light studio then it would be warmer shadows and you know what everything all depends it all depends on how the light is bouncing how you have your light position where the light is in relation to your subject what it's bouncing off of because then it reflects back into the model and you must know all of that if you want to be really good at this and i think most people that get very good at this do have that ability. They know about temperature, Kelvin degrees, bounce light, they set up their studio, that you really do want to do that. Um, and the way I set up so that my colors look good and my paintings look good in all situations, I have an east light coming in this way from my studio. I'm usually turned the other way, so it's coming in from my left. But I have lights in my studio that are 5,000 degrees Kelvin. Why do I do that? I mix the warm and the cool together so that in any light, if I take this to a gallery, which is a warmer light, it will look really good. It actually glows more because I'm using a little bit more of a cooler light to paint in, but I, I kind of mix them together so it's neutral so that it looks good in cool light, warm light, it looks good in the dark. You know, if, if you shut your lights off and you step back, and a teacher once told me this, step all the way back 10 feet if your paintings look good in the dark, they look lit up, you're good to go. If they look like they glow, your color is good. So I always went by that, shut my lights off and go, yeah, still looks good. Okay, I'm good. And, um, and use your mirror, check yourself in the mirror. So for her skin, that is the shadow value that I use. And then I used cinnabar green with this red. If I need to lighten it up, I don't use white a lot, and especially in the shadow. I like to keep my shadows transparent and the white will make it look chalky and heavier. For me, there's other people that do that, I do not do that. So this is how I got this green, and there's all different green variations. You could get yellow ochre, I'll do it right here, with cerulean blue. I'm gonna go more yellow ochre here.
And you can get this fairly dark green that can almost be like a, a sap green. And you can use that as a base for your shadow. Add more yellow ochre. Now you have a yellow green. And if you add something like Cad Deep or Lizarin, you can almost get the same look. But now look at the difference. I use cadmiums in this, and this I use earth, right? Could put that. So you see how that looks more neutral. So if you need a more neutral shadow, then you would go into something with an earth color or you just neutralize your color. Um, I like to not use more than two. So I'm always a green and a red or an orange and a blue. Um, usually in the shadow, it is the green and the red for me, unless um, if I'm painting African-American skin, then I'm using yellow ochre and dioxazine purple or permanent mauve. And in Michael Harding's um, line, it's manganese violet. That makes a really great, if, if their skin has that orange tone and some they have the purple uh, in the shadow. So that's how I get that look. I never use uh, browns. I mix to get my own browns. Uh, I hate starting with brown because I always feel like it, it looks dead. Um, and that's just a personal preference. You might like that color, so you use that color. Um, there is no right or wrong. It's whatever works for you. And in the end, it's the end result. That's what counts. So that's how I got that half tone and that shadow if I want it to be more neutral. Up in the light. So I got my Cad Lemon here up with white. And what I did here is I mixed a little brilliant pink and a drop of the Cinnabar Green Medium. And if you can see this color and value is what's on the side of her nose, um, in the eye socket, meeting into the side plane of the nose, and the side plane of the eye socket where the temple is. And all along here, in different half step, quarter step values. And sometimes I drop the temperature just a tad. If you're doing temperature, don't drop the temperature dramatically because it'll look like a hole in your painting. And, and I learned that a, a long time ago. Um, you don't wanna do that. So, Cad Lemon up with either Brilliant Pink, Cad Red, which is here, or Alizarin, which is here, and then I kind of mixed a little bit of the Cinnabar Green Medium. That will give you a totally different color because Alizarin is cooler, even though it's still warm for a dark red. Um, and so if I use a cool color, I'll use a warm color to a cool color, a cool color to a warm color. That's why I do it. I don't, I don't ever do the two cools, the two warms, one next to each other. That's when you start to run into a problem. It's always a warm and a cool, a warm and a cool. Um, or your painting will look either like it's on fire or it will look mauve. <laughs> you don't want mauve. Um, so here would be Cad Lemon with Alizarin. I'll show you how I did that. So. I took a laser in here and I said, hmm, how red do I need to make this? And you have to keep that in mind. You then get your cad lemon, you mix it together. So as you can see, this is more of like a rosy look and in some people's skin, you're going to need that. Um, so keep that in mind. If I add more of the cad lemon, It'll start to look almost like this. Now you can tell in this one, there's more yellow. That has more yellow in it. It kind of has the yellow orange look like the peach look. And some redheads have that color um, skin, the temperature and the color. And here would be more of uh, this models. If I hold that up in certain areas, you can see I have that color and that temperature there. And whenever I want to neutralize the color, I don't use gray, I make my own gray. So if I needed to neutralize that, there's two ways to do it. I could use cinnabar green medium, which is a warmer color if I want to warm it up a little bit. And you have to know, it's like cooking. You have to know what do you 
what does this painting need? Uh, oh, no, wrong temperature. I need to warm it up. I need to cool it up. It's kind of an intuitive thing. And if you do it long enough, you'll get really good at doing that. So I'll put that color here. And so here's cinnabar green with that. And I'm making like a half tone. See, that makes a really nice gray. Um, if I wanted it to go even more dramatic and cooler, I would take the cerulean blue and I'd up it with white first to get it in the value range. And that's like a Munsell system, uh, the Riley palette. I was trained controlled palette. I used to tube my own colors. I went into Nelson Shanks class. We had to use 25 colors and I went, woohoo, I'm so happy to be running in the park. <laughs> you know, for me, the control palette, I, I, I just, it, it didn't work for me and a lot of people love it and that's great. If that's what works for you, perfect. Um, but for me, I like using a lot of colors. I like using complementary colors. But one thing I do is if it's a light color, I don't go in with a light color like this and go in with cerulean blue. If I need to mix that in, what I'll do is first lighten it to the value that it is. And that's very Munsell. Like when you're mixing colors, you want to be in the right value or you can kill the color. And so suppose I wanted to mix a little blue into this and make it cooler and I don't want that much blue. Um, I can gray the color down more dramatically than notice with the yellow green. That's a warmer with the red. So you're still using um, either an analogous color or a dyadic color, which is every other color on the wheel, um, depending on what you need to do in your flesh tone. Is it, does it have more blue in it? As it goes away from the light, it's going to get cooler. As it goes down, the fall off rate is going to neutralize more. And if your light is very far back from the model, the inverse square law, which is the further back a light is, the more illuminated the room is, but the values are closer. The closer your light is, the more dramatic and the faster the fall off is. So uh, remember that. Okay, so cover on flesh tone. That's how I mix. Um, a lot of times I'll use the cerulean blue, yellow ochre, and alizarin and very fair skins. If I want it to be tonal, if I want it to have a little bit more pop like this, I'm going in with the Cad Lemon. Signing off for this week, so stay tuned for my next episode where I will be covering rosemary brushes and what brushes I use for hair and by popular request of some people that inboxed me. So I will be covering that. That will be in two weeks. Stay safe. Don't be bored. See you in two weeks. Signing out. Peace out.